You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You, here to entertain, engage, and inform, well, like we've always been doing just now in a different time. That being said, we're very grateful that you're with us today. If you find the show useful, please don't be afraid to leave us a review or subscribe because guess what? We really, really, really appreciate it and it really helps other people find us as well. Mm. That being said, we've got a great question today about mapping, mapping from multiple elevations. What does the software typically do when you do that? Well, obviously it depends on the software and the photogrammetry engine that you have chosen to use, but there are some things to know Um, as far as mapping is concerned and how mapping at different elevations, what that's gonna do to the quality of the map. Remember, the quality of any map is really what we call the ground sampling distance. For those of you who haven't uh, taken the drone U mapping class. We're considering doing that live, by the way, during this whole situation, because we could literally do a live class and that it would be four days long, but man, you'd learn a lot of information. Um, Anyway, long story short is uh, when you map at two varying elevations, how does it change the quality of the GSD, right? Ground sampling distance is essentially the distance between two pixel centers normalized for real world dimensions. That's ground sampling distance, okay? I mean, technically speaking. So just think about literally the center dot of two pixels and then what's the measurement between those two? That's essentially how we measure the quality of our map. There are other ways to measure quality as well, uh, point density uh, and whatnot, but uh, GSD is fundamental. It's kind of like when you buy a camera, how big is the sensor? So um, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Really grateful. Uh, Today's show is actually brought to you by Shocker. We don't have any sponsors. It's because we only push the people who we truly believe in. And people who I truly believe in and have proven to be awesome in to like over and over year after year, guess what? GPC cases, right? Amazing people. Think about um, Colorado drone chargers, amazing people. I mean, you just think about some of the people that are in this industry that support it. And you know, now with everything that's going on, support the small guys. The big guys have shown you exactly who they are and what they want, which is money and remote ID. So support the guys who actually care. I think you'll be happy. You could also support guys like us. Join us for um, our new search and rescue disaster relief class. It's going to be live stream telecast next Friday. Check that out. You won't want to miss it. It's going to be cheap. It's also going to be nine hours. And not only is this information useful for public safety, it's also useful if you're in real estate, if you're in land development, if you are in event management, well, if you're in city planning, well, what if you're in, hmm, the census? Maybe not so much. But if you love saving lives with drones and you want to be useful in your community and you want to offer that service to help save lives, this is a class you won't want to miss. So make sure to check it out. But let's go ahead, Rob. And uh, I know you haven't said too much in this uh, this intro, but I'm excited to know uh, what we're talking about today. I think actually I haven't said two words as opposed to too much. Anyways, yeah. So I we haven't are, said that was three words. That was. Yeah. So I blew that out of the water. <laughs> Hopefully not like our accounts. Anyways, um, let's just play the question. In a good and way. And I am excited to hear the answer because this is a really interesting question. Hi there, I got a quick question. I accidentally flew a construction project at two different elevations with my drone, and I have GCPs that I know that are accurate. Can I still get an accurate topo with flying at two different elevations? Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, And I do want to say one of the other primary ways before Paul gets into the answer that you can help drone you and help us help you is to continue bringing those questions to light. So ask droneyou.com, please get those in. We really, really, really thrive on hearing from you guys. And obviously that's what make this show go. So anyways, all right. Two different elevations. Um, is she out of luck or is there a way to make it work or? 
Um, I don't think that she's out of luck, actually. Um, if you ever come to a drone you mapping boot camp, uh, one of the first exercises that we run through um, has two varying elevations. And I thought that I knew the answer to this question, and I called a good friend of mine just to say, hey, I know the science, but I also know that certain things can affect this. And what type of answer should I give her? Because essentially, my first thought was, well, if I understand it, it's pretty much going to average the GSDs from the two different data sets. But it also depends, Rob. It really depends on the type of imagery, right? She said she flew a construction site twice and accidentally. I'm guessing she accidentally flew at the wrong elevation. So I'm guessing, is this a double grid? You know, are these oblique images? Because... When it comes to oblique and free flight imagery, you know, those altitudes are really, they negate the GSD because if you're mm. thinking about the type of imagery that it is. That being said, I've also, you know, I want to say like, hey, it's essentially an average of the two, but I also just learned that based off of some of the variables that she mapped um, that can change the average, but also how the average is weighted, meaning is the average weighted towards the higher altitude data set or is it weighted to the lower altitude data set? And this is why we always tell everyone, you know, whenever you're in you're mapping areas with large elevation deviations that you should essentially be mapping in what's called terrain awareness and how important that is. Um, so super, super important. Um, but anyway, yes. Can I ask what the significance is of whether it uses the higher imagery or the lower imagery? So let's say she flew at 100 feet, which would give her, say, a sub-centimeter GSD, okay. versus if she flew at 400 feet, that would give her like 2.5-inch GSD. So uh, essentially, think of it like this, right? You've seen our okay. orthos and what they look like. Yeah. It's not going to quite be the difference between satellite imagery and our type of orthos, but it would literally take her GSD or the quality in half. So inevitably, she could still be r accurate, but not as accurate as she might have otherwise been. Is that a fair statement? Because it's taking the two and averaging them? Say that one more time, just make sure I heard it right. Sure. So what I'm saying is that because she asked, having done this and having flown flights at two different elevations, can I still have an accurate topo? And so what I'm asking is that the answer could be yes, relatively, but it's not as accurate as it could have been had she not done that. Yeah, yes, but also I'm just thinking about like the premise of the question in itself and what is accurate? What were the GCPs that right. she took? What is sure. the GPS that was used? What was the multipath interference that day? What was the KP index, right? We really don't know whether her map is going to be quote unquote accurate, right? Understand, understand. That's why I use the word relatively. And I... So you're saying relatively, if she were to delete one data set and use the lower altitude data set, that she would have a more accurate map? Yes. Yes, I would agree with that. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't tracking. Well, I was like, what is he saying? No, no, no. And, and part of that, part of your struggling with my question is because it shows my relatively <laughs> basic at best understanding, right? And so you're like trying to come down to my level. <laughs> uh, whatever. I mean, you know, <laughs> we all are at different places in life. And if we were all at the same place, then life would be pretty damn boring. But so what you're telling me by saying your question doesn't really make sense, <laughs> even though it makes sense, it's just not me be that pertinent? Well, I mean, in the context of the question, is it going to be quote unquote accurate? Well, I mean, like it's going to be good, but like, how is she marking her GCPs? Right. Totally like, there's, understand. Like, there's like 40 questions that I'm like, okay, have you done yes. X? Have you done Y? Have you done Z? Have you done alpha yes. one, Bravo one, Charlie one, <laughs> Bravo that's two. Why, that's why I went to relativity <laughs> yeah. is for that very reason. Yeah. Right. But no, you know enough about mapping to know that it's essentially a hundred long piece checklist and if you don't mark every single one well it's right. like it's like the whole matches in a line right you Correct. take one match out and the whole thing's ruined yeah and okay i'm with you and so i'm wondering now is it best that she do that or maybe she wouldn't have enough coverage if she just got rid of one of the if this is for money i would just go refly it yeah it's kind of like a no-brainer. Unless she, uh, yeah. Map mapping is so technical that, like, if you were to have to make a legal decision on it and someone actually came in as an SME to a legal proceeding or something like that, and if if it's so easy to pick apart someone's map because yeah. everything spits out a quality report. 
you know? So like, sure. you know, if you're making these financial decisions off these maps, you've got to make sure that, you know, you've got the right GCP distribution. You've got the right acquisition strategy. Mm-hmm. You're covering the facades and the tops. Like, you know, you, if you've got a terrain deviation, you're, you're covering terrain awareness. Yeah. That being said, to answer her question, it, you will still probably get a decent quote unquote map of whatever you did. Um, uh, it's not really an average per se of the GSD between the two flights because so many variables will affect uh, essentially how the average is weighted and so many other things. There's not one answer to that question. It's so very you, scientific. It is. And it also always depends, right? It always depends. That being said, you know, she asked, uh, you know, what should I go do? I would just go remap it at, you know, what is it called? Uh, at one flight, excuse me, one flight line, get it done. One altitude, get it done. Well, not really that difficult, especially if you're making financial based decisions off these map maps. This is also a great reason why if you're a drone mapper, one of the things that we've been teaching recently in the drone mapping boot camp is that whenever you shoot your GCPs, shoot some extra natural markers. Why? Well, because if things like this ever happen, you can just go out and reshoot the whole thing and not even worry about bringing landing pads or GCPs because you shot natural markers. You can still stake down your map, essentially. You can geo-reference it. Like if I remember right in Denver, the some of the natural markers you were trying to help people find was like where concrete meets grass, mm-hmm. right? So there's a definitive where when you get into PIX4D and you're marking, mm-hmm. it's really much easier to do. Yep. But one thing that I hear in her voice, because you're saying go back out and refly, is I hear, and I could be wrong, um, but maybe a little bit of desperation. She said construction. And so it could be that the project has moved along. Oh, the project has along. changed. Well, then I would just run the data set as she has yeah. it and you get what you get and... And you don't throw a fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for finishing that song for me, Rob. <laughs> Singing's not my kids. day job. <laughs> I have too many kids. <laughs> Love it. Oh, anyway. All right. Well, that is going to do it for our show today. If you have a question, whether it's business, whether it's about making money with your drones, videography, cinematography, inspections, or mapping, let us know. We would be happy to answer those questions. Just upload them. Ask DroneU.com. I'm sure as more and more time becomes free, more and more questions will come around. And we are sitting here to help you. And I mean that seriously. We would love to help you. It's actually the, the greatest joy in our lives is helping others. And that's no BS. And I think the proof is in the pudding and the actions speak louder than words. That being said, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is One Crazy Market and a great podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for watching.